The, the cancellations notwithstanding, uh, how does demand look and how is it being impacted by Omicron, if at all? The, the TSA numbers that I saw, uh, certainly pre-holiday period, look pretty good relative to even 2019. Exactly. You make a good point, Scott. I think the you know, pre-holiday, you saw TSA numbers that were 85, 80-85% uh, of uh, 2019 levels. Again, you don't have a lot of international travel and, and business travel happening right now. And over the holidays, actually, it got close to 95%. So the demand side of things is very strong and, and people are willing to travel. I'm sure there were probably some trips that were canceled because of Omicron, but, but generally, I think the demand environment is really strong here. Um, from a cancellation standpoint, so I think... Yeah, forgive me. No, for, forgive me. I thought you, I thought you finished speaking. I, I wanted to ask you about the cancellations and, and what the bottom line implications are going to be uh, for the airlines, assuming that it continues to some degree for the next few weeks. Yeah, so this is a, it, but that's exactly right. If you look at the actual numbers, if you look at it across all the kind of the U, major U.S. airlines, you know, cancellations are about five, six percent. Uh, I think uh, taking up to about seven percent yesterday. Again, just looking at the U.S. airlines, and um, the risk here is, you know, if there's more winter weather, you do have a little bit more absenteeism um, because of Omicron and, and crews being having to, uh, you know, quarantine here for about ten days. Um, the risk is, you know, you start getting close to timing out of crews generally that you see towards month end. So we're, you know, keeping a close eye to, into the end of the year. I think the bigger implication for airlines is as long as we have, you know, variants and, and requirements to, you know, quarantine for 10 days, regardless of, you know, the severity of things, you're going to have to have a higher level of reserves, a higher level of crews that you carry. And that's not good for kind of airline costs, and it, it's not good for crews' earnings power because they they make more money when they fly more. And if you're carrying more crews than you need to on a on a non-peak day, then they're not going to be able to fly as much. Hey, Savi, I wonder um, how attuned you'll be to capacity mm -hmm. forecasts once we start getting uh, the next earnings prints, and how material capacity itself is to the stocks right now. It, it, it's actually uh, a, a little. Perversely, if the capacity is lower, I think there'll be a better sentiment on the airlines because there is a concern, at least in the off peaks, that there's a little too much capacity here. And if you look at the industry's hiring about hiring and plan to train about 8,000 pilots next year, for example, just one labor group there. And in you know the last peak, they only hired and, and trained you know 5,500 uh, or, or so pilots, and so. There's, it's already constrained. So I, I, I think if, if airlines come to the decision that they need to carry more crew members uh, to, to meet the holiday peaks, then I think you're going to have constrained capacity. And, and that probably, uh, from a passenger standpoint, uh, translates to higher fare. Isavi, it's interesting because the airline industry received $50 billion in government aid and then some last year to keep people on its payroll and then also pursued buyouts for some longstanding crew members. And I'm wondering if you think that was a mistake to let many of those crew members walk out the door. You know, hindsight is 2020. If you look at what was happening last year, um, it looked like people weren't going to travel uh, meaningfully, that, you know, demand levels uh, would be down. I think we've all been kind of surprised by how quickly demand has come back uh, this year. That said, I think beyond just that, I think the other thing that airlines probably also didn't take into account is, again, the, the higher level of absentees. And some of that uh, gets resolved as we go through this. Um, but, 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 you know, just supply issues and, and a higher level of kind of absentees among, among crew members I think you just have to have carry more people than you normally would expect. So I think it's a, a, a combination of events that have happened here. One, just being surprised by how strong demand has come back, and two, just how many more crews you have to kind of hold on to to fly the same schedule. So I, I think airlines kind of did the best they could. I, I don't think there's anything sinister here in, in how they've handled it. It's just, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty.